the Philippines. Named by the adventurer Magellan for his king, Philip of Spain. Long before the Spaniards came to these islands, even before the island kings, God loved these people. Today, Southern Baptists are working with the Filipino people in Jesus' name. Jesus came to give life and more abundantly. He met people's needs right where they were. He shared himself and the power at his hand to help them. The Rural Life Center, a Southern Baptist agriculture project, reaches the people. Ako si Antonio Dazan, taga Barrio Cuatro Banga. I am Antonio Dasan, a native of Banga, South Cotabato, and I came from a very poor family. We live in a hillside, and uh, we used to farm a little piece of land, but for uh, several years already, we cannot produce anything, simply because uh, we did not know what happened to the land, and uh, somebody, a pastor, told me to go to Boost to learn and encouraged me to attend the training there for three months. He told me to go to the tribal Boost here in Dumadalig and uh, I went, although I did not have enough money to go, but uh, I made it and now I am already two months here and I've learned a lot of uh, new things, new uh, technology, new methods of farming and uh, I'm very grateful that I can go back and use my training, my knowledge in trying to improve our farm. I used to believe in many gods simply because uh, our parents and our grandparents taught us to worship a lot of spirits in the mountains and uh, we call him Diwata but I've learned that uh, the Bible uh, tell us about God who loves me. Uh, there is the Lord Jesus Christ who uh, died on the cross and I came to believe him uh, while I was here and accepted him as my Lord. I, uh, it means a lot to me simply because now I can be assured that uh, I can go to heaven. I can be happy simply because God is with me. Uh, I will go back and teach my parents, my brothers and sisters uh, where I live simply because uh, they do not know God. Uh, they still worship uh, the gods of the mountains and all the spirits there. 1971 saw the beginning of the Rural Life Center, the RLC, on the Philippine island of Mindanao. Harold Watson and others at the RLC were concerned about so many needs, it was hard to know where to begin. Here was an underdeveloped land where the majority of the populace are farmers, subsisting on what they can gather from or grow on small mountainside plots. Mountainside plots the farmer must abandon every few years because the torrential rain erodes all his topsoil. Following Jesus' example of meeting people where they were, the Rural Life Center team sought to reach out to farmers. Their philosophy? Redeem. Missionary Harold Watson leads the project. We call this Redeem, uh, redeeming people from poverty, redeeming people uh, in a Christian sense also. So the Rural Life Center then began to have uh, objectives and goals that we would work toward. Uh, we realized we had to do some research work, so R in Redeem meant uh, simple research. We did not want to become a research institution that we would concentrate on just research. And uh, this is some of the pitfalls that other institutions have uh, gotten themselves into. It, it's very interesting to do research work in various areas. It's very productive. Uh, and we did not want to just zero in on that. So. The R in redeem is research. Uh, education certainly is a part of it. And so uh, we wanted to teach people what we had discovered, what we had learned. And so education, we became more of a, a teaching institution than uh, a research institution. Uh, D was development. We have developed salt. We've developed uh, ways of uh, a farmer could go into small dairying 
uh, simple gardening, fish culture, and uh, many of these areas. So we are very much involved in development. Uh, evangelism and extension make up the other two E's in Redeem. Uh, we do a lot of this together. It's rather hard to say where uh, agriculture stops and witnessing begins. We try to mix these together because we believe they're part of a whole. And as we do our extension work, uh, we also do evangelism. And here at the Royal Life Center, uh, we have Bible study with each group that comes. And of course, the M and Redeem is missions. We are a mission group here, representing Southern Baptists uh, in the United States and around the world. Uh, we are people with a mission, and that is to share Christ uh, with everyone and share Him in such a way that people's lives are affected. Uh, their whole life is affected. We believe that we are both body and soul. And so the Royal Life Center addresses itself to this kind of philosophy, uh, research, uh, education, development, extension, evangelism, and mission. We began to talk to farmers and ask them, what kind of farming system would you want? And uh, from that, we began to develop. Uh, we have to be very sensitive that uh, though we may have a lot of knowledge about agriculture and, and culture here and what the farmer likes and not like, nonetheless, uh, it all has to come from him. Our project here would be people uh, orientated. We, we are not here to raise goats necessarily. We're not here to plant corn. We're here to help people. The Rural Life Center is set up as a base for redeem activities. Each project has a model here. Farmers can come and learn how certain agriculture and animal projects work. They actually see how it's done, work within it, then are offered help as they go to their farms on an extension basis. Salt is one of the most popular projects. Each year about 1,500 people come to the center and learn this process called sloping agriculture land technology, salt. We use hedgerows of a particular plant that's able to be cut back and, and will retune itself. Uh, we use several plants now that uh, is capable of holding the soil, forming a barrier to hold the soil, and to add uh, fertility to the soil through the use of its leaves. And uh, these contour lines go across the hill about every three to four yards apart. The farmer farms in between the contour lines, which we call the alleyway. We grow permanent crops, we grow uh, row crops, uh, and of that nature there. Uh, this is designed specifically for uh, farmers who have to use a lot of labor, or they have a lot of labor available in their home. Uh, it is not a type of farming that we can use uh, equipments uh, like tractors and other type uh, mechanical farming tools. Uh, we use hoes, shovels, and uh, tools of that nature. Uh, it's a type farming system that's designed for the, a one farm family. It is actually about two and a half acres. With a salt project, we can double to triple the farmer's income once the salt project begins to produce. It takes about a year to two years to really get it producing uh, at top uh, income levels. Another activity of particular importance in the Philippines holds the acronym BOOST, Baptist Out of School Training. The word BOOST means to lift up, and that's exactly what the staff at the Baptist Rural Life Center are trying to do with this program. On the island of Mindanao, there are around four million out of school young people who need training and direction for their lives, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Four communities have been set up on the island. The communities are set up to combine familiar type surroundings, new farming methods, and a spiritual support group. Harold explains. Their ancestors were food gatherers. They are trying to make the transition from gathering food to producing food. Here we have houses in which these students will live in. They live in little family units, about five to six students per house. The house is designed much like they live in in the mountains. They have a garden. They have animals in the back 
of the lot. They have hogs and goats, and in other areas we have fish projects. As we have surveyed their area and looked at the projects that they are working with there, we have tried to simulate the same conditions from which they come. A trained pastor lives with the trainees, and there is a daily Bible study, after which each student concentrates on his or her project. On Sundays, they go in teams to established churches or to church sites where they witness and fellowship. A big part of this fellowship is sharing their experiences on the farm. When the time comes for them to go to their homes again, they take with them knowledge of new farming techniques and a support concept of relying on Christian brothers for rural life support in their endeavors. Not only that, they become Christian brothers and sisters reaching out farther and deeper into the general Filipino community. Tito Falanco is coordinator of the Boost program. With our Baptist mission here and with the help of our institutions, Southern Baptists are, are making inroads into the gospel ministry simply because we have a lot of, of uh, things to uh, back up what we say. Uh, we have examples for them to, to see and we, we have uh, we have uh, groups of uh, Christian. We have organization in our convention and our mission that uh, makes what we say a reality in terms of uh, people to know who we are, what we're doing, and what we want them to see uh, in us and through us. The individual, the community, and the nation gets a boost from Baptist out-of-school training. If it seems as though you're hearing a great deal of acronyms and programs, you're hearing right. The needs are great, and the agriculture missionaries at the RLC endeavor to provide something for everyone in farming. Here is another example. Uh, farmers come here to learn better ways of farming. We do development work here, and we have extensionists that go out to our rural churches and to rural areas where we have agriculture projects. We provide animals, we provide seed for these farmers so they can get into a farm program. In our rural churches, we sponsor a Christian farmers club. Uh, we have over a hundred of these clubs right now in our various rural churches. Also, we're vitally concerned and involved in the spiritual development of farmers and church, rural church areas. I am June Anga, a pastor of Iman Baptist Church. I believe that the Christian Farmers Club have really helped much of our church, uh, especially where the members of this church are 90% farmers. We are happy enough that because of these CFC programs, there are more people who have heard the gospel because of the projects that they would like to invest into their own farm. And also when we try to uh, teach this to these farmers, we always say that we 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 would like to say that we will not forget about sharing also the gospel or the salvation that Christ died for our sins. Christian Farmers Club is an organization the small farmer can join in his own village, which brings families and friends together to solve problems of rural life. Coming together with one voice gives them an opportunity not only to share new techniques with one another, but a chance to have representation with other organizations and the government for help they need. One activity the Christian Farmers Club endorses highly is a faith garden in every home. Similar to the idea of the victory garden in World War II, the food always in the home gardens means meals for a hungry family, even if a particular crop fails due to weather or disease. Often, the Christian Farmers Clubs will visit the Rural Life Center, and their members will learn of ventures which can be done cooperatively as a club. Uh, sometimes they will go together and purchase an animal uh, and they will use that in a breeding program right there in their community. Another project that many of the farmers will come here to participate in would be fish culture, uh, then seed production. Uh, we produce a lot of the garden seed and legumes that will produce protein and so we have a lot of farmers coming to buy seed, 
or to see a certain uh, variety of plant. They've heard about it, and they would like to see how it's grown, to see what it looks like. So many farmers come uh, looking at uh, these kind of projects. Uh, we discover that uh, a farmer is a real good judge within himself as to what will work on his farm. And we try to supply him um, a selection of things so he can see maybe 15 or 20 different projects. And from that, he would select one or two that might fit into his farm system. Perhaps the best way to explain the variety of programs at the RLC is to review the basic philosophy acrostic in detail. Redeem. Research takes place in many ways, most evident in staff time, searching for information and planning the implementation of farming techniques, which must be specifically designed for the Philippine climate and terrain and the lifestyle of the people. Education is accomplished daily as the team provides information for boost groups and follows the farmer's progress throughout his farming life. Development is seen best in projects like SALT, sloping, agriculture, land, technology, and dovetail projects, such as permanent crop cultivation within seasonal harvests, also being developed with the Filipino farmer specifically in mind are fish ponds, snail farms, snails being excellent duck feed, hatchling egg production, duck raising, and goat breeding. In each of these cases, a model has been developed to show farmers how it works. Evangelism and extension are hand in hand. The extension work is done around the nucleus of a church group or hopeful church site. Baptist out of school boost trainees and graduates extend themselves into the villages to share knowledge learned at the RLC. Pastors encourage their people to adopt Christian farm clubs and work together in a Christian atmosphere. Families in the clubs have food always in the home, faith gardens. They also have classes on hygiene and health care and Bible lessons from Scripture. As a natural effect of all of this, missions happens. People who are helped to new food sources, security and happiness ask, why am I being helped so freely? Harold Watson tells the story. We sometimes say uh, one of the hardest things in the world is to really help someone. And we have not helped him until we reach a point where when we pull out, he can continue to go on. Help is not a one-time project that looks good for a short period of time and then it, it moves out. But it's a project that slowly starts and means something to that farmer in food or income. So uh, we try very hard to start with the farmer realizing that he can only do so much. He's limited in equipments and things like that, so therefore he must start with what he has, what he has in hand, what knowledge he has, and, and begin to build upon that. Through agriculture, many doors are open to us. Uh, wherever we go now, after being here uh, a little over 15 years, people know us. Uh, and wherever we go, if we say we're from the Mindanao Baptist Rural Life Center, they know that we are interested in them as a person and not just evangelizing. Many groups come and they have crusades and they leave. And that's the end of their making Christ known to them and their changed life. We believe that uh, we should deal with the whole person, not just part of him, just the spiritual part. And many people are left hungry for something and they're easy prey to every group that comes along. So planting churches, planting crops, all dovetail in to helping people to see that Christ really cares for them physically and spiritually. <laughs>